Hey, Coach Miller here with B2B Lacs. I have another college lacrosse recap for you for the week of March 14th, 2022. Today's the 17th. We've got some games coming up. We had a couple games going on midweek this week, so we'll go over all that. So let's dive into it right now. But real quick, guys, if you're looking to take your lacrosse game to the next level, go ahead, check out some of the programs I have in the description of this video. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and like it. And then make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can keep on getting more of my videos. All right, so let's dive into this week's weekly recap. All right, so last week, the storylines. Ivy League is cruising. They have a ton of teams in the top 20, which I'll go over in just a sec. But Princeton, they took down Rutgers 16-11. Harvard pounded Michigan 14-9. And Brown took down Stony Brook 10-7. Notre Dame loses three straight as they dropped Ohio State 14-11. Jack Myers had another big day. Another Gonzaga alum playing high-level calls across. Let's take a look at my predictions from last week. I thought Stony Brook was getting too many goals at three and a half. <laughs> the hook played well in this one because with Brown's 10-7 win, I was able to get that one. Nova, they covered. Ohio State covered. Rutgers did not. They got pounded by Princeton. Bucknell did not either because they played BU. I watched a lot of that game. BU controlled the majority of that game. It got close a little bit, but for the most part, BU had a handle on that game. I thought that Georgetown would win a close game at Richmond. I couldn't see the line because I'm in Virginia. Georgetown won by five. They were pretty much in control the entire game, so I gave myself a check, but in reality, it probably should be an X because it really wasn't that close of a game. Notre Dame loses three in a row. That is correct. Uh, let's take a look at the ACC. UNC fell to Virginia about a week ago tonight, 15-11. I'll show you a couple highlights of those right now. The vision of Connor Schellenberger on full display. When you play with a Chris Gray or you play with a Connor Schellenberger, you know every single time you're on the offensive zone, you have an opportunity to get loose and get the rock in such small windows. Cormier on the wing, a quick pass to Connor Schellenberger. All right, here we got Harrison Schertzinger. He's got a twin brother on the team as well. They're from Cincinnati, Ohio. He had two ACL injuries earlier in his career, but he battled back for a hard righty dodge with a nice goal there. Eight seven, Virginia. This play is unbelievable. If you look here, this this is Matt Wright, one of the best defensemen on UNC, with that nice little takeaway. UNC gets a feed from Chris Gray to Jacob Kelly for the feed for the goal. Eight eight ball game. Look at this check. So here we have a. UNC man up 44 right there is a Gonzaga alum, PJ Zisner. Here's just a great, if you look at UNC's man up, you have Chris Gray there and sometimes he'll shoot this, other times he'll feed this. So he makes it really hard for the defense to play. They get a goal, 10-9 UNC. And this is when Virginia goes on their run. Here we have Matt Moore, one of the hardest guys to defend, dodging and calls across. Just has that great little move there. Gets top side to his left hand. And then nice little fake shot there. And then pings it. All squared here. Then we have Schellenberger. He scores here for, that's his fifth point of the game. And he's had 10 consecutive games where he's had five points. That's unbelievable. He's a strong dodger. You can see the stick just break of the defenseman. And he gets around the corner for that goal right there. And then, so Virginia's up 11-10. And then you can see, like, UNC has a, makes a little play here where they get the ball on the ground. But then UVA is able to pick it up. Bink, bink, bink. Schellenberger again for this feed, which is just unbelievable. Curling around the cage. They take the 12-11 lead. Okay. Notre Dame fell to Ohio State 14-11. So that was their third straight loss. 
Ohio State played well. I watched some of that game as well. Jack Myers again had a big game. Syracuse lost to Hopkins 10-7. I watched a lot of that game as well. Syracuse outshot Hopkins by a wide margin. Syracuse had something like 55 shots. A lot of those shots either hit the pipe or missed the cage. If some of those go in, who knows what happens to the momentum of the game, but they didn't, and Hopkins wins by three. And Duke lost to Loyola for their third loss of the season. Loyola won their second game of the season with a big win over Duke. America East, Vermont's dropped three games in a row, so now they're off to a strong start, but now they're two and six. They, I mean, they just played a lot of close games in the beginning, but they look to have some promise, but two and six is, with three straight losses, has to be trying times for Vermont. Stony Brook's five and two. They lost to Brown and then came back and crushed UMass Lowell. Atlantic Sun Conference, not too much going on here other than Utah is traveling to Georgetown this Saturday at 11 a.m. I'm going to go to that game. Stay tuned for that. Big East, Denver is struggling. They've lost four of their last five games with their last loss being to Yale, 16 to 13. As I talked about, Georgetown beat Richmond 15-10. Providence has won a few games in a row. They got themselves to a winning record. St. John's is still struggling. Villanova is 500. Big 10. Michigan, they were undefeated with kind of that weak schedule. Harvard comes to town, takes them down. All right, let's take a quick look at a few clips from the Harvard-Michigan game here. Unlucky break for Michigan hits the pipe. Then we have a great save by Harvard goalie Mullen. Mullen is 6'3", 210 pounds. He's a senior from Pennsylvania. And this ends up going down the other way. Harvard's able to capitalize with a goal by Hayden Cheek. Hayden Cheek is a junior from Wellesley, Mass. You'll see in a minute here, he went to Nobles in Mass, the high school, private school. He's actually teammates with number three, who you'll see score in an upcoming clip here as well. So they were high school teammates and now they're college teammates, which is pretty cool to see. So Harvard's here getting settled. At the moment, they're down 2-1. They tie it up right there, 2-2. Two, two. All right, here, Harvard's man up. Michigan does a good job of, you know, putting a little pressure on. Harvard mishandled the pass there. So Michigan ends up killing the penalty, and then they get it's all man, it's all even situation. Harvard's getting their guys in, but there's a miscommunication here, and Harvard's able to get a quick goal because 27 is left wide open there for the goal. Harvard takes a 3-2 lead. From there, Harvard continues to score. They end up going up 4-2. And then here, you'll see Nick Loring, who was that high school teammate with Hayden Cheek. Gets a nice goal. They go up 5-2. Just a little two-man game there. Harvard gets mishapped on the pick. There's the score. All right, and then last clip here, we have a little man up opportunity with Michigan. They're able to convert here with a goal from Ryan Cohen, number 40. You'll see him with a nice little lefty shot here. He's doing a good job moving around, being active inside there. Then he pops out, he gets a good look. But then Harvard just hanged on, and they ended up winning the game by five, giving Michigan their first loss of the season. Michigan is 7-1. and one. Ohio State is cruising. Penn State is struggling. They're 2-6. and six. They've had some close games, but they can't get victories. Maryland, 6-0. and oh. They crushed Albany this past weekend, and who do they have coming up next? At Audi Field in Washington, D.C., but Virginia, that's the number one which is Maryland versus the number two team, which is Virginia. So that's going to be a huge game. And Hopkins got a winning record by taking down Syracuse. CAA Conference, 
Delaware got back into the top 20. They're ranked 20th. Drexel, they've won four straight. I went and took a look at their schedule, and they lost. They won their last game in double overtime over Marquette, 11-10. Ivy League, the Ivy League is solid. Every team is either one loss or zero losses, and they're all cruising. But this week is gets interesting because they all start playing each other, so that means teams are going to be knocking each other off. Cornell, Princeton, and Penn are all in the top 10. And then you add to that Yale, Brown, and Harvard, who are also in the top 20. So six teams in the top 20. And this week we got a lot of showdowns. Cornell versus Yale, Harvard versus Brown, Princeton versus Penn. So we'll see what happens with all those games. Should be fun to watch. The MAC. I just took a look at St. Bonaventure again, just because they were 5-2. and two. The rest of the teams are not doing very well. And the Bonnie's website said that they played Cleveland State two games in a row. They played them on March 11th, won 12-5, and then they played them again two days later on the 13th. They won 11-10. Interesting. I wonder if that was always scheduled. NEC Conference, not much happening here. St. Joe's is 5-2. and two. I don't have much else to say. Patriot League. All right. Bucknell, they lost to BU. BU's the only undefeated team left in the Patriot League. They took down Bucknell 12-7. They have two games coming up. Holy Cross, who hasn't won a game, and then they play Harvard. Loyola had a big win over Duke, so it shows you they got some talent for sure, but they still stand at 2-4. Navy plays Hopkins on Friday night. That's always a barn burner, so we'll see what happens there. And Army's playing good lacrosse. They're six and one. Southern Conference, Jacksonville beat High Point 16 to 13. High Point has UNC coming up. Jacksonville has a pretty easy game coming up. Richmond, they're 500. They lost the last two games to Duke and to Georgetown. Some of the lines for this week. Notre Dame, Michigan, two and a half. Michigan's getting two and a half. Georgetown hosts Utah. Georgetown is giving five and a half. Harvard Brown, Harvard's giving one and a half. Navy Hopkins, Navy's getting three and a half. Cornell Yale, Cornell's giving one and a half. Penn Princeton, Penn is getting one and a half. So a lot of those Ivy League games, all one and a half spreads looks like. Five and a half for Utah. That seems like a lot. I went and looked at Utah's schedule, see who they played. They really haven't played that many teams. That's tough. They're coming off a loss. I still think five and a half is too many. My predictions for this week, I think Virginia beats Maryland just because Schellenberger is going to be too much. My bets, I like Brown getting one and a half. I like all dogs again this week getting their points. Yale getting one and a half. Penn getting one and a half. Utah getting five and a half. And Drexel getting three and a half. My pick of the week, Brown getting one and a half over Harvard. I think Brown's going to go to Harvard and win. So the fact that they get, you know, a goal and a half to play with is even better. All right, we'll take a look at the USILA rankings for the week of March 14, 2022. As I said, the Ivy League's been crushing it. There's going to be a lot of movement this week, though, because those Ivy League teams are playing each other. Maryland's playing Virginia. So a lot of a lot of stuff is going to happen this week with teams playing. And Notre Dame, I don't understand why they're still ranked. They're 1-3. and three. They still get all this love from the ranking people. I don't get it. All right, we'll take a quick look at the NESCAC rankings. Tufts is 3-0. Amherst 1 and 1, Bates 0 and 4, Bowden is 4 and 0, Wesleyan is 4 and 0. So, Nescax starting to get some games under their belt, and we're going to see, you'll see in just a minute that Wesleyan's been making their way up the rankings as well. So, yep, Wesleyan bumped up five spots last week. They were 14th. This week, they are 9th in the top 10. Tufts still stays at 3. The one and two swapped. Salisbury took over the top seed at number one. RIT is two. Tufts is still three. The other team from the NESCAC, Williams, they're at 14. So, and they dropped this past week. And they dropped down five spots. All right, let's take a look at some clips from the Tufts-Amherst game. I played at Tufts back in the day. Coach Casey Denoffel is the head coach. I played with them. 
really good friend of mine. This is from the Tufts Lacrosse YouTube channel, which Ruinus runs, and it, they have a great footage of all the different looks. 33 right there, who just had that lefty rip. Kurt Brune from Gonzaga. Another Gonzaga Eagle alum playing high-level college lacrosse. 28, Jack Boyden. He was a NESCAC Player of the Week. He had a huge day. Number seven, Charlie Tags. His last name is Tagliaferri. He's from San Ramon Valley, California. And he had a big day. Brune ended up having six goals in this game. So he came up big for a big early showdown between two NESCAC perennially good, good teams. Tufts ended up winning 18 to 14. And you're gonna see some good footage here of some awesome camera work by Drew and his team. We haven't had one of those games in a while, okay? So again, that's, again, I thought the resilience that we showed, do we have things to improve on? Absolutely. Okay, no question we have things to improve on. All right, but the resilience, nobody getting scared, nobody with their tail between their legs, right? We're staying in the 10-man, we attack, right? That's what we do, right? We don't go into defensive mode, we attack everything that we do, all right? So to play with that confidence, all right, having guys step up in big moments, all right, that's gonna serve us well moving forward, all right? And again, that, what you saw there, is what we're gonna see from every team that we play for. You're gonna see every team's best effort. You're gonna see every team's best ever. So that's why it's us versus us, all right, so that we're not doing this, right? Keep doing what we do, keep attacking, keep understanding that we're gonna see every team's best effort. All right, that's gonna make us better, right? That's gonna iron sharpens iron right there. All right, so there you have it, the weekly recap. We got a lot of good games coming up this weekend, highlighted by Maryland, Virginia. We'll see what happens with that. But if you, like I said, if you like this video, go ahead and like it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Coach Miller, talk soon.